بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن نظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قطمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم خذ العفو وأمر بالعرف وأعرض عن الجاهلين وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم يسروا ولا تعسروا وبشروا ولا تنفروا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام A Bedouin once came to Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu anhu and he said صف لي أخلاق النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Can you count, highlight and enumerate the qualities, attributes and the characteristics of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Ali radiallahu anhu asked him, Awa ta'rifu al-adda? Do you know how to count? He said, of course I know how to count. So Ali radiallahu anhu then said to him, Udda li mata'ad dunya. Count for me the items, the belongings and the possession of this world. So the Bedouin replied by saying, Mata'ud dunya la yu'ad. The items, the belongings, and the possessions of this world is not something I can count or I can enumerate. So Ali radiallahu anhu replied by saying, "Ajazta an wasfi mata'i dunya, wa qad shahid Allahu bi qillatihi fi qawlihi taala, qul mata'u dunya qalil, fa kifa asifu laka sifat al-Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam." وَقَدْ شَهِدَ اللَّهُ بِكَوْنِهِ عَظِيمٌ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٌ Ali رضي الله عنه said, You telling me you unable to count, highlight and enumerate the items, the belongings and the possession of this world, yet Allah declares it as minute, trivial and insignificant, and then you put the daunting task upon me, to enumerate the characteristics of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Allah declares it as sublime, outstanding and superb وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you are on the station of the noblest level of character. The Urdu poet said مِلْ نَهِ سَكْتَ كَهِ أُنْكَ جَوَابٍ مِلْ نَهِ سَكْتَ كَهِ أُنْكَ جَوَابٍ Mustafa ko Rab ne rakka la jawab. Mil nahi sakta kahi unka jawab. Mustafa ko Rab ne rakka la jawab. I simply cannot find the appropriate word to aptly describe the impeccable life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then again, on second thought, how can I possibly find the word when Allah only created one like this? Kufar wala muki ka ke reh gaya, kankriyo ne de diya aisa jawab. And Abu Jahl was left rejected, humiliated, when the very pebbles in his hand glorified Allah. But here's the highlight and this stanza blew me away. Allah is my witness. Allah is my witness when I heard it for how many days I cried. The poet says, Pehle mein unku ji bar ke dek lu. Pehle mein unku ji bar ke dek lu. E farishto fir lena mujh se hisab. Pehle mein unku ji bar ke dek lu. اے فرشتو فر لینا مجھ سے حساب a plea, a request, an application to the galaxy of angels tasked to examine and interrogate man I have a plea to you, O Malaika 
after my death and post my resurrection, when I stand up and my eyes meet with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, can you pause your hisab to me on hold? Allow me to take satisfaction by looking at my Nabi and marveling at his beauty and allow me the time. You have no idea how I have been pining for this moment. Then by all means, whatever the protocol is, interrogate me, question me and whatever needs to happen. The poet then concludes by saying, Embrace the teachings, the legacy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah will endow you with a jannah, unimaginable, inconceivable, and indescribable. May Allah make us amongst those fortunate people. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ Those who will be the heirs of the loftiest abode in Jannah. One of the many formulas to the success of the mission of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the many formulas to the success of the mission of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was his high level of personal discipline coupled with a sense of concession allowance and accommodation for others sadly we want to adopt leniency for ourselves and impose harsh verdicts on others, and Allah forbid we driving people away from the deen. I cannot and will not forget this American revert. I shared platform with him in America and in Malaysia. He took the shahada. He said, I walked into a masjid three years after my shahada, a prominent figure, and I don't want to mention his name. And as I entered into the masjid, a brother passed the remark, what kind Muslim is this with long hair like this? He said, I went back home and I'm telling you, Sheikh, from the day I became a Muslim, I was never tempted to leave Islam more on any day than that day. But the tale gets more intriguing. I debated at home. Do I abandon Islam or do I hold on? Allah guided me. Allah rescued me. I shaved my hair because I was on a guilt mission. I stopped attending the masjid. Few days later, I mastered the courage to attend the masjid. Then I decided to study Islam only to discover that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa had long hair. Only to discover that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa had long hair. And let me add by saying, even if you are strict on yourself, the teachings and the temperament of Islam and the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not to be strict on others. So there is no way and inshallah if my time allows me, from Quran and Hadith I will support what I tell you. Be strict. Be stringent, be harsh on yourself, be super disciplined on yourself within the limits, within the bounds, within the parameters of Sharia. Give leeway, give allowance, give if al wala haraj, if al wala haraj, bashiru, wala tu nafiru, yassiru, wala tu asiru. The Nabi of Allah's legs, hatta tawarramat qadama, standing in prayer till his blessed legs would swell. But the concession he gave was different. Okay, chapter 7, Jews 9, verse 199. The verse I recited. خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ So a loose translation. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, adopt pardon. خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ Advocate virtue. وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And ignore the belligerent and the ignorant. 
It's not my discretion or your prerogative to interpret, expound, elucidate, unpack, or, or pass a commentary on the ayah. We knock the doors of those who are experts on the exegesis of the Quran, the likes of Allama Alusi Baghdadi, Ruh al Ma'ani. He says, What is meant by Afa? The common translation of Afa is pardon. Ayma Sahula wa tayassara min akhlaq in nas. Wa ila hadha dhahaba ibn Umar wa ibn Zubair wa aishatu wa mujahidun radiyallahu anhum. Wa akhratahu Ibrahim ibn Adam marfu'an an rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allama Alusi Baghdadi says in this ayah, Allah impresses upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, adopt afwa. Afwa here means take from the people what they can perform averagely, commonly, even if it is of mediocre level. وَالْأَخْذُ مَجَازٌ عَنِ الْقَبُولِ Furthermore, so the academics can appreciate it. وَالْأَخْذُ مَجَازٌ عَنِ الْقَبُولِ أَيْ إِرْضَ مِنَ النَّاسِ بِمَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنْ أَعْمَالِهِمْ وَمَا أَتَى مِنْهُمْ وَتَسَهَّلَ مِنْ غَيْرِ كُلْفَةٍ وَلَا تَطْلُبْ مِنْهُمْ الْجُهْدَ وَمَا يَشُقُّ عَلَيْهِمْ حَتَّى لَا يَنْفِرُوا Read, read Ruh al-Ma'ani. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take from people what they can commonly perform within their ability. My, my focus today is fiqhur rasuli ma'an nas. How did the Prophet of Allah deal with different people? Was it one approach? Was it one ruling? Was it one verdict? Or was he cognizant of the circumstances that surrounded every individual? I am not for a moment advocating that you must become lenient on yourself. No, no, you're losing the point. Go strong, go harsh. You want to only eat that which is grown in your house, that which is organic, that which is GMO free, that which didn't go through any other forms of artificial intake. Good luck, but don't impose that verdict on the ummah. I will share with you to the best of my ability. Okay, so O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take from people ma ata minuhum wa tasahal min ghayri kulfa wa la tatlub minuhum al-juhda wa ma yashukku alayhim hatta la yanfiru. Don't impose on them something that is beyond their muscle, beyond their cloud, where they have not reached that level and they cannot bear it. Let it not be that this drives them away from the deen. So it's basic Arabic understanding that whenever you interpret any word from the Quran or Sunnah in a broader context than the common, then you need to support your claim through Arabic poetry, etc. It's elementary, you know, those that are into it. So Allama Alusi then also makes mention of the poem of Abu Aswad Duwali, wherein the poet says to his wife, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ مِنِّي تَسْتَدِيمِ مَوَدَّتِي خُذِ الْعَفْوَ مِنِّي تَسْتَدِيمِ مَوَدَّتِي وَلَا تَنْطِقِي فِي صَوْرَتِي حِينَ أَغْضَبْ O oh my beloved wife, accept from me average and don't raise the bar of expectation too much. This will be the catalyst to sustain a healthy relationship. And on a side note, that's a meaningful reflection. I've been harping on this uh, in my personal interactions and observations. One of the key reasons for breakdown in marriages is elevated expectations in an underperforming world. So you enter in the union with very high expectations. And by doing so, you predisposing yourself to disappointment. But rather go in with an average expectation and a surprise is always welcome. If your wife or your partner delivers above a surprise, it's a problem when you're looking for money in your closet and you don't find it. But it's always welcome when you're looking for something else and you find money. That they don't know, oh, look at that man, I was looking for my, see now I found money. No, 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 that's welcome, that's pleasant, right? So, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ مِنِّي تَسْتَدِيمِ مَوَدَّتِي Oh my wife, take afwa, take average, don't ask too much. And what did the other poet say? 
اقل اللوم عاذل والعتابا وقولي ان اصبت لقد اصابا او ماي وايف يو نيفر فيل تو كريتيسايز مي وين اي ام دوين رونغ اند باي اول مينز كونتينيو وذ ذات اي جست هاف ا ريكويست اوكيجنلي وين اي ام كوريكت سي اف يو هاف سم تايم تو كومبليمنت مي اقل اللوم عاذل يعني يا عاذله اقل i'm not saying don't condemn maybe if you can just drop down reduce your condemnation wal itab wa quli in asabtu laqad asaba dia is the noon sakin five types and hence uh, that is the shahid in the poem wa quli in in asabtu if i am correct and i have been accurate then compliment me and say no what he said is correct مفتي الشفيع رحمه الله in his tafsir volume 4 page 123 volume 4 page 123 he opens up this discussion and he writes and i'll give you a verbatim write up from what's there so you can read it yourself you can access the english the most agreed interpretation of afwa is an action that can be done with ease and without any difficulty except what the people can do easily impressing upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in religious obligations he should not expect the high standard of actions from the people please read it yourself then he says let me give a practical example salah the essence of salah is to stand before your lord in total veneration isolating yourself from worldly actions and thoughts this type of prayer can only be achieved by a handful of worshipers the verse therefore asks the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not to expect that from everyone when i say our deen is beautiful it is beautiful in every way my brother its practicality its pragmatic nature its user friendly all inclusive all accommodating we have messed up unfortunately but the deen is just flawless Let's have a look at some of the verses of the Quran. So Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayh, Imam Tirmidhi and Imam Abu Dawood make mention of a narration that there was a sahabi by the name of Ma'qal bin Yasar radiyallahu anhu. Rawa al-Bukhari wa Tirmidhi wa Abu Dawood anna Ma'qal ibn Yasar radiyallahu anhu zawwaja ukhtahu bi rajulin min al-muslimin. فكانت عنده ثم طلقها تطليقا ولم يراجعها حتى انقضت العده so maqil ibn yasar radiyallahu anhu got his sister married to a sahabi a companion the union lasted for a stint and a period and then unfortunately the relationship was dissolved so the companion radiyallahu anhu divorced his wife and during the period of idda he did not revoke her and then it ended and after, and let me stop you for a moment i can i can become very emotional on this point here there are so many men that are unfortunately abusing the responsibility of talaq recently i was involved in two cases which left me restless for nights the first the man was guilty of immorality promiscuity infidelity debauchery and then when he was told divorce your wife no i don't want to anger allah i don't want to anger allah and you know what my brother there was a man and this is on local shores because he withheld the right of talaq the sister unfortunately resorted to abandon her islam to come out of the marriage My brother you only have one of two options you keep the woman with respect or you release her with dignity 
You don't have another option. Surah Talaq, chapter 65, only 12 ayat, only two ruku, in four pages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the men four times, fear me, fear me, fear me. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرًا وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ وَيُعْظِمْ لَهُ أَجْرًا In fact, five times, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Allama Shabir Ahmad Uthmani writes in Tafsir Uthmani in this 12 ayat, jaga jaga par, ayat ayat after every ayat, fear me, fear me, fear me, to impress upon the man the only way you can bring sanity, stability and bliss in your marriage is if you keep that woman in your wedlock fear in Allah. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهُ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَمَنْ Every, every verse, fear me, fear me. What is this? You'll never get a divorce. That curse will come back. And when it incapacitates you, don't ask questions. This has become a, no, no, no. I cannot tell you how many cases I'm dealing. No, I don't want to give her a divorce. No, she must sing. Sing what? Luqman Hakim told his son, إِذَا دَعَتْكَ قُدْرَتُكَ عَلَى ظُلْمِ النَّاسِ فَتَذَكَّرْ قُدْرَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ When your ego starts whispering to you to abuse, then remind yourself of Allah's authority. Remind yourself. Watch how you're talking. Watch how you're behaving. There is a Allah that is in control. There is a Allah that is in control. Be it your helper, be it your employee, be it your spouse. And there could be circumstances where men are on the receiving end. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm saying it in a, in a neutral context. But because the word talaq came up, it just flashed in my mind. The marriage is not working out, end it and let her move on. What's the need to go through the fasakh process, which as it is unfortunately is so tedious and cumbersome? Walir rijali alayhinna daraja. Is this how you execute the responsibility given to you? Can you imagine when I heard of the sister that resorted to leaving her deen? I just dropped. Are you not liable for provoking a situation like this? Anyway, coming back. The marriage ended. Talaq took place. He didn't revoke. After the it that was over, Hawiyaha wa Hawiyatu. Both husband and wife had feelings again for each other. The man started feeling towards his wife. She started feeling towards her husband. So the Sahabi went back to Ma'aqal ibn Yasar. You're the guardian. You're the brother. You're the man in charge. I was married to your sister. I gave you the narration. It's referenced in the Quran. Chapter 2, Juz 2, verse 232. Uh, Bukhari, Abu Dawud, Tirmidhi. I would like to marry your sister again. So Ma'aqal ibn Yasar radiallahu anhu said, Akramtuka biha, wazawajtukaha. ثُمَّ تَلَّقْتَهَا وَاللَّهِ لَا تَرْجِعُ إِلَيْكَ أَبَدًا I did the dignified thing, I got you married, and then you divorced her, you will never enter a marriage with my sister again. فَعَلِمَ اللَّهُ حَاجَتَهُ إِلَيْهَا وَحَاجَتَهَا إِلَيْهِ But Allah knew, the man was genuine, the woman was genuine, something had occurred, they regretted it, they regretted it. How often our ego comes into it. And I'm dealing with this and please don't take this clip out of context because I know people cherry pick the clip. I, every day there is a person that's coming to me and saying, speak to my daughter, speak to my son. This is wrong. They're into a union. They need to end it. Correct. I'm asking the youth, don't have this dating and this courting. You, what, what the average young person is doing is going into the shop just for, as a parable. And then he looks at the jacket, or he looks at the coat, he puts it on, looks in the mirror, looks great, posts it on Instagram, gets all the likes. Then he phones his mom, or phones his dad, and says, Dad, I want to buy this, what's your feeling? No, no, I don't think you need a coat. Now you wore it, and this is just an item. Here you create an attachment and a bond, you develop, you evolve, you have feelings, you have emotions, and then you're taking it to your parent, and then when they resist it, you're getting offended. But understand your process is flawed. 
Now to you, my respected senior, can I appeal to your intellect? They have been foolish, childish, and naive. What they did was wrong. Do we stoop so low and now we make this thing toxic and make it unpleasant? Or do we rise above, give them a little discipline explanation, and if the basic principles are in place, a person with iman, ahlu sunnah, correct aqaid, might not be satisfying every uh, like of ours, but let's go ahead and, and salvage the situation. But each one becoming tough and adamant, and each one becoming obstinate. And then we see what happens. Allah knew that they were genuine, so Allah revealed the verse, وَإِذَا طَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنْ فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ إِذَا تَرَاضَوْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ This was the good fortune Sahaba had, that regardless of who they were, their emotions was immediately steered through revelation. You know what? You are a companion and your passion is in its place. But no, this is the teachings of Allah. And Sahaba were compliant. They were obliging. As a parent, I'm not always right. As a guardian, I'm not always right. Allah and his Nabi are always correct. So Allah said, وَإِذَا طَلَّقْتُمُ nisa." When you divorce a woman, فَبَلَغْنَا أَجَلَهُنَّ Her period, her, her idda has ended. And let me make an appeal here. My sister, Idda has nothing to do with your late husband or more so with your ex-husband. Idda has everything to do with you and your Allah. Our women don't want to sit in Idda. But he did this to me. Why must I sit? It's got nothing to do with him. I'm having counseling sessions just to make a woman understand that Idda is Allah's command to you. Now I'm in a depression. First I'm upset what he did. Now I'm having issues trying to understand why Allah imposed this on me. My sister, Allah's dealings, Allah's injunctions are perfect. And then two months later, Idda was the best thing in my life. Idda was the best thing in my life. Don't be so impulsive. Wait, understand. Allah knows your makeup. Allah knows your anatomy. Allah knows your composition. And Allah has said, يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوا Go into pause, go into wait. It's got nothing to do with him. Just like my brother, you need to give the nafaka for the three months, you give it. No, but she's like this. Allah told you, you must give her. مَتَاعًا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Each one of us, Allah has put a command on us. Look at what Allah has told me and do it happily. You want to get back at her and get... No! Where you, you, I need to win with my creator and you need to win. So when the verse was revealed, Subhanallah, Ma'aqal ibn Yasar said, Sam'an li rabbi wa ta'a. Allah, if you told me, my apologies, come here my brother-in-law, happily I get you married to my sister. You know how much courage it takes? You know how much iman it takes? You know how much strength it takes? But that was Sahaba and hence they were the leaders of the Ummah. Now see what's written in Bayanul Quran under this ayah. فيه أن المباحة لا ينبغي التشدد في المنع عنه فيه أن المباحة لا ينبغي أت... I feel like standing and screaming but I rather just behave. فيه أن المباحة لا ينبغي التشدد في المنع عنه While the ayah tells us that don't stop them from getting married it also releases to us a point when something is principally permissible don't be harsh in prohibiting it. When something is principally permissible, 
My brother, eat with your hands. Eat on the floor. But someone eating with a fork and a knife, don't make him a kafir. Eat with three fingers. Eat with the food in front of you. Cover your hair. Sit humble. That's the sunnah. That will bring you close to Allah. But something which is principally permissible. Don't, don't make fatwas on people. Because then, Hatta la yanfiru. will drive people away. Oh man, Imam Ghazali, وَكُنْ كَالْمُؤْمِنْ يَتْلُبُ الْأَعْذَارِ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَالْمُنَافِقْ يَتْلُبُ الْعُيُوبِ وَكُنْ كَالْمُؤْمِنْ You know, I read Muhammad ibn Abdullah's quotation. He said, الْمُؤْمِنُ يَتْلُبُ الْأَعْذَارِ وَالْمُنَافِقُ يَتْلُبُ الْعُيُوبِ I kind of liked it. But then I read Imam Ghazali. He didn't say الْمُؤْمِنْ. He said, وَكُنْ كَالْمُؤْمِنْ وَكُنْ كَالْ and be like a believer. Be like a believer who looks for an excuse. And don't be like a munafik who's searching for a flaw. I was probably in London, but somewhere I was giving a talk. And as I'm delivering a talk, I'm observing one person in the congregation drinking with his left hand. He's drinking with his left hand. And uh, unfortunately... Allah is putting these thoughts in my mind, whatever I made, to Allah, Allah guide me to say the right thing. But my heart hurts so many times of so many things. I want to give a report also from where I came back. But whatever Allah puts, I'm going to share. When we talk to non-Muslims, we can talk loud about the simplicity of our funerals. You know, we, our culture, our teachings, our funerals are amazing. But if that same non-Muslim asks me, tell me about your weddings, then we drop our head down. The South African Muslim Ummah can rave about the Islamic infrastructure. They can rave about the institutions and the seminaries, the amount of scholars and ulamaya. But when it comes about character assassination, when it comes about slandering, this Muslim Ummah of this country has to drop their heads down in shame. How can I forget? In California, there was a conference, I was there. And there was a particular scholar who was really impressive. And I took the opportunity in front of that panel of scholars to invite him home. And he kept quiet. I said, please come to South African shores. I would love to host you. And he observed silence. And I mustered the courage to invite him again. And he observed silence. And on the third time, he said, because you persist in, I'm telling you, I'm afraid your scholars will first critique my appearance before listening to my discussion. And I, I, I was silent. I was silent. This ummah can speak about a lot, but this ummah has to drop its head in shame. So I'm observing this person, and unfortunately this is the culture. And then you get the young kids on the block. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَلَا هُدًا وَلَا كِتَابٍ مُنِيرٍ Like no knowledge, no experience, no expertise, just blowing. You are not representing the deen. So I'm observing drinking, he's drinking with his left hand. Three days ago I was in Turkey. In fact I got back yesterday. So while I was there, one sheikh, one alim, he phoned me and he said, oh, I've seen you here in Turkey. I would like to bring a few of my students to come and meet you. So I said, you know, I've just retired on my bed and I'm about to sleep. He says, please, man, really, I've been listening to you. Can you afford us some time? I slept my jubba on and I dashed out. I came into the lobby. My other colleagues were in their room sleeping. And I sat down and, uh, yeah, greeted them, everything. And he said, oh, these, they're from Samarkand. They're from Bukhara. Please give them some nasiha. They speak Arabic. In my broken interaction, I seized the moment and I conversed with them. One of them recorded it, uploaded it. Subhanallah, everybody sends me an acknowledgement. You get a question mark from a South African scholar. But very strange, your topi was not on your head. 
Okay, actually, I'm in a hotel here, and this is a lobby area, and I was about to sleep. We are a toxic nation and a toxic generation and we're living in a broken society and until and unless we don't learn to account for our actions that will negatively impact others, we will remain where we are. I don't owe anyone anything. No, no, me and you owe people a lot. We owe an apology to those we hurt. We owe respect to those we have disrespected. So I'm observing that brother drinking with his left hand and I'm delivering my talk. And after the talk was over, they formed a line to come and greet me only to discover that man only had a left hand. Allah is my witness, I'm in his house. Allah is my witness, I'm in his house. The man only had a left hand. If, if the earth could split on me, it was that day. How I was reproaching myself. Okay. When something is principally permissible, don't be harsh. Now here's the qualifying statement. Provided it doesn't lead to anything that is forbidden. Right? Sometimes you could say Saddan Lil Bab. Saddan Lil Bab. Don't stop someone from something permissible. Provided it doesn't take them to the forbidden. Absolutely. If indulgence in the permissible is opening the door to the impermissible, then you need to curb it, control it, regulate it. But then the Ibarat goes on to say, La siyama idha afdal imtina'u anhu ila mafsada. If stopping someone from the permissible is taking them to the impermissible, then at no level should you stop them from the permissible. So, by all means, apply the highest level. The Prophet ﷺ inspired people by his personal discipline and by the concession and the accommodation and the allowance he had to other people. Our deen is not, this is wrong, that is wrong, this is forbidden, that is forbidden. No, 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 no. Chapter 12, Juz 12, verse 12. Please check my references. أَرْسِلْهُ مَعَنَا غَدًا يَرْتَعْ وَيَلْعَبْ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ The siblings of Yusuf said, send Yusuf with us tomorrow. يرتع. We will enjoy, we will eat. رتع يرتع رتعا رتعا Enjoy. يلعب, we will play. وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ And we will protect him. Yaqub السلام expressed his apprehension for external factors that the the wolf must not devour him. He didn't principally object to the agenda of an outing. Under this ayah, chapter 12, Jews 12, verse 12, Mufti Shafi writes, Rahimahullah, the permissibility of a trip or a outing, a picnic, going out. Then he references Qurtubi and others that the ayah says it's fine. Yes, don't indulge in the forbidden. Be relaxed, but go out, be casual. Our deen is beautiful. Within the laws of Islam, enjoy it. Understand the time in which we live in. Understand where the youth are. Appreciate the dynamics. فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ I don't want to convert this into a tafsir lesson, but the ayat and the depth of Quran just takes me away. So, chapter 4, Jews 4, verse 3. فَنْكِحُوا wed, مَا طَابَ Generally, everybody knows this ayah. فَنْكِحُوا wed, مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَا حَلَّ Those that you have permissibility of, whether you wed in one or two or three or four. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it. 
There's so much in this ayah. I try and make it quick. Fihi attaladhu bil mabahat. Fihi attaladhu bil mabahat. Wal ikthar minha. Wa intikhabu tib minha. Wa annahu ma lam yakun fihi ifratun la yunafi azzuhda. Wa amma alladhi yakhafu al-ifrat aw al-tafrit fal-aslam lahu al-iqtisar ala al-qadr al-dharuri minha wa li dhalika ashara ta'ala li mithli hadha al-rajul ila hadha al-iqtisar fi qawlihi fawahida wa dhakara hikmatahu fi qawlihi dhalika adna alla ta'ulu akramakum Allah فَنْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ Wed, marry, two, three, four, in as permissible by Islam. What does the ayah? بَيَانُ الْقُرْآنِ حَكِيمُ الْأُمَّةِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ فِيهِ أَتَّلَذُّذُ بِالْمَبَاحَاتِ The ayah is advocating the permissibility of deriving pleasure in permissible. If we're going to block and lock and stop and control our youth from the permissible, then what's going to happen? فِيهِ أَتَّلَذُّذُ بِالْمَبَاحَاتِ وَالْإِكْثَارِ مِنْهَا You don't have to limit. Something is nice, it's tasty. Have more, have variety. وَأَنَّهُ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ إِفْرَاطٌ لَا يُنَافِئَ الزُّهُدِ as long as you stay within the limits, this will not constitute an act contrary to the teachings of Islam. Look at the fawaid al quyud وَأَمَّا الَّذِي يَخَافُ الْإِفْرَاتِ أَوْ التَّفْرِيدِ The one who fears, now this is the key point I need to mention, the one who fears that he won't have the balance, فَالْأَسْلَمُ لَهُ الْإِقْتِصَارِ عَلَى الْقَدْرِ الضَّرُورِ مِنْهَا Then limit yourself to the bare minimum. وَلِذَلِكَ أَشَارَ تَعَالَى لِمِثْلِ هَذَا الرَّجُلُ إِلَى هَذَا الْإِقْتِصَارِ And Allah impressed upon such a person who fears. My brother, listen to me this point very carefully. If you fear that you will not be just, then Allah said, then limit yourself to one. And the reason for this is, ذَلِكَ أَدْنَا أَلَّا تَعُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ We're not reading Qur'an. And if we read in, we're not understanding. And if we understand in, we're not making tadabbur. Mufti Shafiq rahimahullah has written something amazing here. He writes, Allah said, If you fear injustice, then marry one only. But Allah did not say, If you marry one, then you are exempted from injustice. The Quran hinted, that you could be married to one wife and subjecting that one wife to injustice. No, no, you know what? I didn't take a second wife. I don't want to do injustice. No, the Quran says you could be unjust and abusing even one wife. Why? Allah didn't say if you have one, then it's over. ذَلِكَ adna, ذَلِكَ adna, Allah ta'ulu. This is closer, the chances are less. On a different note, a thought comes to my mind, unrelated, taqrib al faham I want to buy a slow car. Why? So I don't have a speeding fine. You can have a speeding fine with a slow car also, buy. Now, don't apply the connotations of what you say, my wife is slow. No, there's no... There's no connotations here in any way, please. I, I was blown away by this. Dalika adna. How many a woman are in a man has one wife? Adna from Dunuwun. Ala ya ulu mala yamilu. This is closer that you will not incline to oppression. La ilaha illallah. In verse 129 of the same chapter. Allah says, وَلَن تَسْتَطِيعُوا أَن تَعْدِلُوا بَيْنَ النِّسَاءِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتُمْ فَلَا تَمِيلُوا كُلَّ الْمَيْلِ فَتَذَرُوهَا كَالْمُعَلَّقَةِ That even if you try to be just between your spouses in everything, you won't able to be just in the expression of love. It will vary. But look at the beauty. I mean, Quran, 
Allahu Akbar. You will have to scream and renew your iman in gratitude. That's all you can do. Like Allah, I don't know how to thank you. You made me a Muslim. That's all. That's all. وَلَن تَسْتَطِيعُ أَن تَعْدِلُوا بَيْنَ النِّسَاءِ You won't able to balance your emotions out. So this involuntary tilt of your heart towards one over the other, because you're attracted to her, the Quran even regulates that involuntary tilt. The Quran regulates that involuntary tilt. Your heart is tilting towards her a little more. Now that it's tilting to her more, which you can't control, let it not be that you give her more time, more money, more wealth, because that is something you can control. You're offending your other wife. La ilaha illallah. Okay, we move on. Another ayah. Chapter 2. In Juz 2, verse 235. وَإِذَا طَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَبَلَغْنَا وَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا عَرَّضْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْ خِطْبَةِ النِّسَاءَ أَوْ أَكْنَنْتُمْ فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ Allah says you've divorced a woman or she has lost a husband. She is in Idda. During the period of Idda, she is impermissible for you, O men. You cannot marry her. She is still in Idda. But Allah says, now listen to this, the beauty of our deen. Our deen is in absolute harmony with our anatomy. Allah says, I know you men, you will not able to resist discussing her knowing that she's in Idda. You know, Allah not matara, even Allah is acknowledging the context. There's men, I don't know. A woman is in idda. She's impermissible to get married to. But Allah says, I know, annakum satadhkuruna hunna. You will be talking about it. You will be discussing, yeah, so and so is divorced. So although she's impermissible, Knowing your nature, I'm making it permissible for you to drop a hint. says, For example, you drop a message and you say, Inna ki la jamila. MashaAllah, sister, Allah bless you with a lot of beauty. Rubba raghibin fiq. I doubt after it that you will be lonely for long. I doubt after it that you will be lonely for long. Woman, yajidu mithlak. Your late husband was so lucky. I wonder who's the next lucky man. I'm quoting what Jalalain wrote. And what, what did Hakimul Ummah write? Fihi ay yura'a zu'fat talibi fil amri bil mujahada. Fihi ay yura'a zu'fat Talib, the mansha, the temperament, the message of this ayah is accommodate the weaknesses of the believer and the seeker within the limits. Allah is accommodating your weakness. Look at look at the deduction. Look at the rich extraction. She's not permissible for you. But Allah says, you would have discussed. So I'm allowing you. With, don't, don't, wala ta'zimu nikah. Don't fix it. Don't conclude it. But if you drop a hint, listen, you, brother, hey, sorry to hear about your sister. Yeah, inshallah, don't worry. Tell her she mustn't worry. She must just focus on it. That's all. No, what do you mean? No, I'm just telling you that's what I mean. Just for, I'm just talking generally. I don't want my wife to get nervous here in any way. <laughs> okay. La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. The last ayah of Surah Baqarah. Fihi ri'ayatu talib fil amri bil mujahada. The ayah is telling you, be cognizant, be accommodating, understand the context of people. The hadith is in Bukhari. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu narrates it. 
He says that uh, Mu'ad radiyallahu anhu used to lead us in prayer. Sayyidina Mu'ad radiyallahu anhu used to lead us in prayer. So he used to come and sometimes perform lengthy units of prayer. So on a particular instance, he came and led us in Isha Salah. And he recited a lengthy rak'at. He recited Surah Baqarah. فَتَجَوَّزَ رَجُلٌ فَصَلَّى صَلَاةً خَفِيفًا فَبَلَغَ ذَلِكَ مُعَاذًا فَقَالَ إِنَّهُ مُلَافِقٌ فَبَلَغَ ذَلِكَ الرَّجُلُ فَأَتَى النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهُ أَفَتَّانٌ أَنْتَ يَا مُعَاذٌ أَفَتَّانٌ أَنْتَ يَا مُعَاذٌ أَفَتَّانٌ أَنْتَ يَا مُعَاذٌ جابر بن عبد الله بخاري narrates it he says that Sayyidina Mu'adh رضي الله عنه used to lead us in salah one day he came and he read a long rak'at so the rak'at was very long one person broke away from the salah and he offered a short prayer and he went away Sayyidina Mu'adh رضي الله عنه heard about it that this man had joined and then he excused himself and he left Sayyidina Mu'adh رضي الله عنه Mu'adh رضي الله عنه was a giant he was a legend he was a I don't even have the words to describe who he was. لو كان معاذ بن جبل حيا لو كان معاذ بن جبل حيا ووليته ثم قدمت على ربي عز وجل فسألني من وليت على أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لقلت وليت عليهم معاذ بن جبل بعد أن سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول معاذ بن جبل إمام العلماء يوم القيامة Oh, I don't know who to give this here. وَمَضَى وَخَلَّ الْأَمْرَ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَاجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ عُثْمَانِ وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ قَتَلَ الْحُسَيْنَ فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ بَاءَ مِنْ مَوْلَاهُ بِالْخُسْرَانِ لَسْنَا نُكَفِّرُ مُسْلِمًا بِكَبِيرَةٍ وَاللَّهُ ذُو عَفْوٍ وَذُو غُفْرَانِ Sayyidina Uthman had handed over to the six. He said, I'm handing over to six people and they must, uh, Sayyidina Umar, because Mu'ad is not alive. If Mu'ad radiallahu anhu was alive, there would have been no two opinions. I would have made him in charge. And then if Allah asked me, Mu'ad, Umar, who did you make in charge? I would say, I made the man in charge who your Nabi said is the leader of the ulama on the day of Qiyamah. Abu Muslim Khawlani, Abdullah bin Thub, that's his name. Abu Muslim Khawlani is his kunniya. Ibrahim Hadi al ummah Aswad Anasi wanted to drop him into the fire as well. He had left and he was coming. Back in the mid-90s, Allah had given me the ability to go to Damascus. It was after Asr and I was standing at the grave of Abu Muslim Khawlani. I still have a vivid picture of this. He said, دَخَلْتُ مَسْجِدَ حِمْس I entered Masjidah Hims. فَإِذَا جَمَاعَةٌ مِّنَ الْكُهُولِ يَتَوَسَّتُهُمْ شَابٌ بَرَّاقَ الثَّنَايَا صَامِتٌ لَا يَتَكَلَّمْ فَإِذَا مْتَرَ الْقَوْمُ فِي شَيْءٍ تَوَجَّهُ إِلَيْهِ فَقُلْتُ لِجَلِيسٍ مَنْ هَذَا فَقَالَ هَذَا مُعَذُ بْنُ جَبَلْ فَوَقْعَ فِي نَفْسِ حُبُّهُ I entered the masjid of Hims in Damascus. All elderly people were sitting. In the dead center was a young man, Mu'adh ibn Jabal. I didn't know who he was. Samitun, quiet, silent. فَإِذَا مْتَرَ الْقَوْمْ فِي شَيْءٍ When they had a dispute, they would return to him and he would resolve it. I nudged my colleague. I said, who's this? He said, this is the man Mu'adh himself. From that day, my love for him was indescribable. Don't tell me someone is pious. This is the most pious man of the Sunnah. This is the most learned man of the Sunnah. Mu'adh radiallahu anhu heard that that man ended his salah and he left. Mu'adh radiallahu anhu said he's a munafiq. That companion, I gave you the reference, Hadith of Bukhari, Jabir ibn Abdullah, please read it. That person radiallahu anhu heard, so he came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulallah, inna qawmun na'malu bi aydina wa nasqi bi nawadihina wa inna mu'adhan salla bina al-bariha fa qara al-baqara fa tajawwazdu fa za'ama anni munafiq. O Nabi of Allah, we are laborers. We work with our hands. We irrigate the farms with our camels. It's a long day for us. I came for Isha. Sayyidina Mu'adh radiallahu anhu performed a long rakat. I'm a working man. I'm a working man. I was in Ireland. I, Allah gave me the ability to fast that day while on Safar. I got there at about four in the afternoon. I rested in the hotel and the Asr Salah was at 7.45. After Asr, I gave a talk with Allah's help for two hours, eight o'clock till 10 p.m. 10 p.m. the sun set. After that, we had Iftar and then Taraweeh. A brother came to me. He said, I stay 30 kilometers away. I leave early for work. 
The fast is 21 hours. I don't have the courage to come to the masjid, but I'm performing my prayer and my taraweeh at home with two, three of my neighbors with short surahs. I hugged him. I congratulated him. I said, I'm envious of you. Understand the context. Did you know our, our deen has on certain instances different rulings according to different dynamics? Let me complete this hadith and I'll share that with you. We labor with our hand, we toil till late. And then Mu'adh radiallahu anhu performed the lengthy rak'at, O Nabi of Allah. So I offered a brief salah. Now he's saying that I'm a munafiq. Our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed Sayyidina Mu'adh radiallahu anhu with utmost veneration and respect and reverence to the galaxy of Sahaba. We narrate it to the extent that it is narrated. Afattanun ante ya Mu'adh. Afattanun ante ya Mu'adh. Afattanun. O Mu'adh, are you making fitna? Iqra' wa shamsi wa sabbi hisma rabbika al-a'la. Read wa shamsi wa duhaha and read sabbi hisma rabbika al-a'la. Our beloved Ustad Hazmul Abbas Sab one day mentioned to us that Mufti Abdul Rahim Lajpuri Rahimahullah one day said, when you speak into the general person, don't tell him read Surah Ikhlas. He doesn't know Ikhlas. Tell him by read Kulhu Allahu Ahad. Understand where the Ummah is. Then the Nabi of Allah said, إِذَا صَلَّى أَحَدُكُمْ لِنَفْسِهِ فَلْيُطَوِّلْ مَا شَاءُ When you perform in salah yourself, perform as long as you want. But when you lead in my, con- my ummah in congregation, please take note of the woman in that congregation, the children in that congregation, the weak one in that congregation. I'm performing salah and I hear a child cry. فَأَسْمَعُ بُكَاءَ الصَّبِي فَأَتَجَوَّزْ فِي salati. Then I make my salah short. In Nurul Ida, I don't like to mention, and even Hakimul Ummah has mentioned that we don't mention Masail in a talk, but I'm trying to fiqhur rasul, I'm trying to explain a point. My message is, I said my opening comments, become very disciplined on yourself. Sleep early, rise early. And I can speak two hours with the grace of Allah on the dimension of discipline on yourself. But that's not the focal point of my talk today. My point is, go strict on yourself, but within the boundaries, go lenient on others. When Sayyidina Ali was asked, who is a scholar? The first thing he said, مَن لَمْ يُقَنِّطِ النَّاسَ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Of course, وَلَمْ يُرَخِّصْ لَهُمْ فِي مَعَاصِ اللَّهِ Nobody says that. Nobody says that, give them رُخْصَةِ in Allah. But the, don't make people lose hope in Allah. I was flying from Dubai to London. Allah reward my beloved mom and she made so much dua for me today. And of course, my beloved respected father. And uh, I phoned her at Dubai and she said, boy, inshallah, they'll give you an upgrade. Okay, alhamdulillah. I was in business class, so, but my mother made dua, got to the boarding gate. I got a complimentary upgrade. Alhamdulillah, it was Ramadan. And I boarded the flight, occupied my suite. Three hours into the flight, it was uh, iftar. Whether it was Perth or London, I stand for correction, but I have this vivid recollection. Anyway, I looked out of the shutter, I seen the sun tipping, I engaged in dua. The steward was an Egyptian brother. I told him that, see, I'll just have some drinks, some salads, etc. And, uh, you know, I need to do my iftar. So he presented the meal, and then he said, uh, Sheikh, brother, when you pray now and you open your fast, pray for me also. So I said, okay, I pray for you, I'm traveling and it's Ramadan. What prayer do you want me to make for you? He said, pray that Allah gives me a better job. So I said, you working in the first cabin, many in the business and economy would be envying you. And I'm in the house of Allah. As he said that, he teared. And as I seen him cheering, I'm cheering. He said, I have a, a job that gives me a high salary. But you know, as a believer, I wasn't supposed to sell alcohol circumstantially I find myself in this job but I cry within myself daily that Allah gives me another job so I don't have to present alcohol. Don't 
وَكُنْ كَالْمُؤْمِنِ Go and see the, the good in the ummah. Don't condemn our youth in the universities. Then others will take them away. Go rescue our youth. It's our sons. It's our daughters. We want Muslim females to become doctors. If we're going to shun them, we will pick this ummah. Everyone there is not doomed. In the books of Fiqh, it's written, I don't like to mention ruling, but just again to explain. Now when I was in the camps, and we were doing relief work amongst the refugees, I said to my kids and I said to my colleagues, I read in the books of Fiqh that one of the reasons of tayammum is cold. Bardun yakhafu minhu at-talf. I never in my life experienced the need of tayammum due to cold. But this time I experienced it. I entered a tent of a woman outside the tent. Three days ago, the snow was half this wall. It was minus seven. The sister welcomed us into the tent. I shudder to tell you what it is. That tent, never mind giving you lakum fiha difun. It doesn't give you warmth. Or taqikum, taqikum har. It doesn't give you, protect you against heat. That tent doesn't even give you satar. It doesn't give you cover. That tent doesn't give you cover. I entered that tent. Mother and five children sleeping on the floor, on sand, minus six. Adjacent is what they define as a kitchen and they define as a bathroom, empty, nothing. I'm holding this one child and I'm hugging him and another child comes to me, Ya Am, Ya Am, who are your team? Who are your team? Give him the candy first before you give me. Because he's an orphan, I'm not an orphan. I couldn't look that child. Every time I'm out doing social work, Allah is my witness. Allah is my witness. All I come back in my hotel and for the whole night I say, Nafaka Sulaiman, Nafaka Sulaiman, Nafaka Sulaiman. I was dishing out, we had one dinner with, with, with the orphans. So I held this orphan, I hugged him, then I opened up the meal, I gave him a drink, he's staring, he's trying to rationalize who am I so I said no Anna Abuk I'm your dad and I'm hugging him so I gave him he smiled he chuckled after a little while as I'm leaving he came and he held me he said but you told me you're my dad where is the crisis of the summa and where are we stuck in chapter 4 Jews 5 verse 94 يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا ضربتم في سبيل الله فتبينوا ولا تقولوا لمن ألقى إليكم السلام لست مؤمنا أو يوه بليف إذا ضربتم when you struggle in the path of Allah فتبينوا investigate chapter four جوز five verse ninety four so the Prophet of Allah had mobilized the group of Sahaba to go out in a particular direction and they went. One person from the tribe became a Muslim and he stood one side with his belongings. He said, see, I'm a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum, I'm a Muslim. I'm from this tribe, but I have accepted Islam. Sahaba Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in applied their mind and they said, no, this looks like a strategy to shield himself. And they struck at him. And then of course, they came back and they narrated the whole incident to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah revealed the verse. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu idha dharabtum fi sabili allahi fatabayyanu. Investigate. Don't pass judgment. Don't pass judgment. Imam Ghazali said, Wahdhar mukhalatata. متفقهة العصر 
لا سيما المشتغلين بالخلاف والجدال منهم فإنهم يتربصون بك لحسدهم ريب المنون ويقطعون عليك بالذنون ويتغامزون عليك بالعيون ويحسون عثراتك في حال عشرتهم حتى يجبهوك بها في غضبهم ومناظرتهم لا يقيلون لك عثرة ولا يغفرون لك زلة ولا يسترون لك عورة يحاسبون على النقير والقتمير ويحسدون على القليل والكثير ويحرضون الإخوان عليك بالنميمة والبلاغات والبهتان إن رضوا فظاهرهم الملق وإن سخطوا فباطنهم الحنق ظاهرهم ثياب وباطنهم ذئاب keep a distance from the man and the individual and the scholar who preoccupies himself with dispute and debate why? فإنهم يتربصون لحسدهم ريب المنون because of the jealousy in their heart they will wait for fortune to strike at you. وَيَقْتَعُونَ عَلَيْكَ بِالذُّنُونَ They will pass nasty conclusions on you. وَيَتَغَامَزُونَ عَلَيْكَ بِالْعُيُونَ They will wink eyes at you. Allah speaks of the kuffar. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَتَغَامَزُونَ لَا يُقِيلُونَ لَكَ عَثْرَةً يُحْسُونَ عَثَرَاتِكَ فِي حَالِ عِشْرَتِهِمْ If they interact with you, they will x-ray every move of yours so that in the next debate, they will challenge you. These are not my words, these are the words of Imam Ghazali. Only Allah knows what my pain is and only Allah knows what my life is. I don't know, but my heart breaks. Where is this Ummah going? فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where is this Ummah going? One senior scholar told me one day, May Allah make it easy for the ulama. I said, why? He said, lack of good salary destroyed their dunya and internal jealousy destroyed their akhirah. No good pay in this world, so the dunya was destroyed. And that's an indictment to all of us. That's an indictment to all of us. How do we respect our ulama? How do we afford them any form of acknowledgement? We don't have the courage to give and when someone gives our eyes pop out. We've advanced in this country. We haven't advanced in rectifying our adhan. Our adhans are not in order. In Nurul Hidha is written, وَإِذَا سَمِعَ الْمَسْنُونَ أَمْسَكْ if you hear adhan correctly, then stop talking. In the Asha it's written, that implies if the adhan is not correct, then it does not warrant that respect because that doesn't constitute adhan. And how are we treating our scholars? How are we treating them? I'm not talking of myself. Leave me. Allah is, Allah is too kind. Allah is too kind. Allah is too kind. But so many times you hear of colleagues and friends and crises and situations. It just breaks your heart down. Imam Ghazali said, فَإِشْتِغَالُكَ بِطَلَبِ الْمَخْلَسِ عَنِ الْهَلَاكِ أَهَمُّ مِنَ الْإِشْتِغَالِ بِنَوَادِرِ الْفُرُوعِ وَعِلْمِ الْخُصُومَاتِ It's more important to clean your heart from jealousy than to preoccupy yourself with understanding intricate laws of fiqh. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then reproached the companions. فَتَبَيَّنُوا Investigate. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ أَلْقَى إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ I'm seeing our Hazrat Qaris up and my mind is going back to I think it was a Friday the day we were doing this ayat in Karate Sabah. May Allah preserve our satiza and our seniors and grant them all goodness. May Allah grant us respect for our teachers and our seniors. Do not say to someone who says to you he's a Muslim, you're not a Muslim. 
No, you're not a Muslim. No, I am a Muslim. No, Allah says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا And don't say, لِمَنْ أَلْقَى إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ He's offering peace, salam, salute. Don't tell him, لَسْتَ مُؤْمِنَا تَبْتَغُونَ عَرَضَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا I don't want to go into that. It's going to take up time. كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ You were like this before. فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah had mercy on you. In Tafsir Uthmani under this ayah on page 122, Asha number 3, you can see it's written there. Allama Shabir Ahmad Uthmani writes two things. كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ You were like this before. One meaning is when you accepted Islam, even your iman was not known. You were also unknown, but you were welcomed. Welcome someone else as well. Welcome someone else. Often, when a couple get married and they are both not religiously inclined, and then one becomes religiously inclined, and mashallah, and the other one has not yet changed so positively, so many a times the one spouse cannot wait along. And I say to that spouse, كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ You're saying she's not performing salah. You're saying he's... But sister, weren't you like that also? The exact words. كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ My brother, I say this, I scream, I yell. Read Quran, understand Quran. For Allah's sake, start learning. You'll see every answer of everyone in the Quran. This is how you were before. Remember where you were. A brother came to me, he said, isn't but the stunned meat is not good? I said, of course, it's not an ideal situation. Absolutely. I said, brother, how long are you eating pure, organic, unstunned? He said, two years. And I said, prior to that, he said, Allah forbid, I was even eating haram. I said, the ummah is where you were. The ummah is where you were. Together we hold them. Together we love them. Together we encourage them that they can realize the beauty, bring in extreme discipline on ourselves, and within the bounds of Sharia, trying to win their confidence. I was sharing with you this incident in Fiqh, and Nurul Iza, it's mentioned. Oh. The thing I need to do and you need to do, my brother, is each one of us trivialize the good you do and magnify the good others are doing. When you're doing something good, we're not doing anything. These people are doing the real work. May Allah bless the Nurul Islam. What an event. So many years. I've given them a lot of suggestions, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, my key suggestion is please don't invite me and rotate the speaker uh, forum. But uh, 12 years gone, they're not listening. Inshallah, they'll listen next year onwards. Acknowledge them. It's, it's, it's humongous, it's momentous, it's great. It takes a lot of effort to take off something of this caliber. Acknowledge. Magnify the good of others, trivialize your own. Consider others to be true Muslims, fear hypocrisy for yourself. Doubt your ikhlas, trust the ikhlas of others. Then we move in. Then we're going ahead. There in Nurul Ida is to tell the students where the author writes, إِنَّهُ الْتَمَسَ مِنِّي بَعْضُ الْأَخِلَّ عَامَلًا اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاهُمْ بِلُطْفِهِ الْخَفِي أَنْ أَعْمَلَ مُقَدِّمَةً فِي الْعِبَادَاتِ تُقَرِّبُ عَلَى الْمُبْتَدِ مَا تَشَتَّتَ He refers to his whole book as a muqaddimah. No, mine is just a forward. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Something. Just a few pages. So anyway, there's one rule in here. There's a bit of a simple. I just want to teach you the beauty of Islam. That, that's my point. That how. So it, in the chapter where it is written about things that don't nullify your fast. If a person, now listen to me carefully. I don't, you know, it's complicated, but the point needs to be communicated. If a person ate and he forgot that he's fasting. One is by mistake. That breaks your fast. Bisabtil madhmada. You gargling and the water went down your throat, that breaks your fast. You're conscious that you're fasting, but the water slipped down, that will nullify and invalidate your fast. Of course, you'll make imsak for the rest of the day. You won't eat, you need to make qada and no kafara. But you forgot completely that you are fasting. Probably it's the first day of Ramadan, you're traveling. My colleagues, we were on a trip in, in, in uh, Jordan, and then we, no, 
we flew from Turkey to Jordan two, three years ago. And then from there, we went for Umrah. So I had not changed my time. And we landed in Jordan, and it was for the first day. We landed at night the first day. We said, right, this is the time. We need to get up. And so we got up and everything looked at the watch. Yeah, we still have half an hour. We eat in everything. Open the curtain, sun is out. Oh, Fajr is in. You realize, we're running on the time schedule of the previous country. So these things can happen and situations can occur. This is you ate and you forgot you fasting. You forgot you fasting. So the ruling is that a person must keep on fasting. فَلْيُتِمَّ فَإِنَّمَا أَطْعَمَهُ اللَّهُ وَسَقَى Allah has fed him. The narration says, فِيهِ لُطْفُ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ عِبَادِهِ وَالتَّيْسِيرَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَرَفْعُ الْمَشَقَّةِ عَنْهُمْ That Allah is so kind, you forgot you were fasting, so Allah accepted that fast. In the books of fiqh, it is written, إِنْ إِنْ كَانَ لِلنَّاسِ قُدْرَةٌ عَلَى السَّوْمِ يُذَكِّرُهُ مَنْ رَآهُ يَأْكُلْ وَكُرِهَا عَدَمُ تَذْكِيرِهِ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِلنَّاسِ قُدْرَةٌ عَلَى السَّوْمِ فَالْأَوْلَى عَدَمُ تَذْكِيرِهِ So you eat in and an onlooker scene, this man is eating and it's Ramadan. If he's young, he's hale, he's healthy, then go to him and say, Hey brother, brother, it's Ramadan. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, I forgot completely. Jazakallah. But the same text goes on to say, if the man who is eating is old, is age. He doesn't have the strength. Probably he's got a little touch of Alzheimer's, dementia, age, many factors, and he forgot, and he's weak, and you know he's eating. The jurists say, currently the manner in which he's eating is permissible because he forgot. So it's better for you not to remind him because of his circumstances. And who wajit abakum wa ma ja'ala alaykum fid deen min haraj. Let me move forward quickly. Uh, my honorable MC was kind enough not to give me a time limit, though he said the dua will be short. Okay. May Allah bless you for your patience. May Allah bless you for your perseverance. May Allah reward our sisters. May Allah reward the management and everyone. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going towards Hunayn. Listen to this incident. Some narrations say it was Hunayn. Other narrations say it was a different campaign. But the narration is authentic. In Tirmidhi, Isnaduhu Hassan. This is amazing. خَرَجَ مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَىٰ حُنَيْنِ بَعْضُ حَدِيثَيْ الْعَهْدِ بِالْجَاهِلِيَّةِ Please listen to this, my brother. Please listen to this. Please Authentic narration, about 2,000 odd companions, رضي الله عنهم, just accepted Islam, just accepted Islam, accompany the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم to Hunayn. As they moving in the campaign alongside the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, وَكَانَتْ لِبَعْضِ الْقَبَائِلِ شَجَرَةٌ عَظِيمَةٌ خَضْرَاء يُقَالُ لَهَا ذَاتُ أَنْوَاطٍ So they moving with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, and these tribes, before Islam, there was a particular tree by the name of Datu Anwat, a huge, magnificent green tree, which they used to respect. What they used to do? They used to perform pilgrimage of it. Ya'kufuna indaha. They would halt there. Yu'alliquna aslihatahum alayha. They would hang their weapons on it. Yadbahuna indaha. They would offer the rituals of animals there. So it was a tree and they used to honor it. The narration is authentic. I read it through multiple narrations. The Prophet ﷺ is going in an expedition. With him are 2,000 people. They are new Muslims. And when they looked at this tree, they said, Ya Rasulallah, ij'al lana dhata anwatin kama lahum dhatu anwatin. فَتَحَلَّبَتْ أَفْوَاهُهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْيَادِ الْجَاهِلِيَّ أَلَّتِي هَجَرُوهَا As they looked at it, it rekindled, it created the nostalgia of their pagan practices which they had now left. 
But they looked at it and it evoked that memory. Oh, Nabi of Allah, see these people got this tree and they worship in it. Please arrange and allocate and assign and nominate one tree for us as well. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahu Akbar, qultum kama qala qawmu Musa li Musa, ij'al lana ilahan kama lahum aliha. You people are saying the very same thing that the nation of Musa alayhi salam said to Musa alayhi salam, make for us a God like they have a God. And this request of theirs made it clear that they had not fully comprehended the article of Tawheed. They had accepted Islam. They were in the company of the Prophet of Allah. They were Sahaba. The Prophet of Allah then made them understand that their request constituted shirk. But the most striking thing of the whole thing was the Nabi of Allah didn't send them back. He allowed them to carry on in the campaign. Some brother might come out in the path of Allah. He might not be as educated as you are. He might not be as learned as you are. Somewhat might be conveying a certain act of deen. He might not have all the necessary knowledge. He might not be a new Muslim. But the condition of his iman is very much like a new Muslim. There are millions of Muslims out there. Their state of faith is like someone who reverted yesterday. لكن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أوضح لهم ما في طلبهم من الشرك وسمح لهم بالمشاركة لحداثة عهدهم بالإسلام No problem, join me, join me Then النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم goes to Hunayn I'm going to start wrapping up and I appreciate your patience النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم goes to Hunayn and in Hunayn, he has this great amount of wealth. And in the distribution of the wealth, he gives loads of wealth to people who just about accepted Islam, who are arch enemies against Islam, or people who were considering accepting Islam. And he did not give to his own devoted, noble Companions, radiyallahu anhum, who had accepted Islam a long time ago. The likes of Abu Sufyan bin Harb, Suhail bin Amr, Hakim bin Hizam, Akra bin Habis, and many others. The Prophet ﷺ gave each one of them, إِذْ كَانَتْ عَطِيَّةُ الْوَاحِدِ مِنْهُمْ مِئَةً مِنَ الْإِبِلِ Hundred camels. To Abu Sufyan, who prior to this was the forerunner in the anti-Islamic campaign. Imam Ghazali has written, Inna fi nasi aqwaman kathirin yuqaduna ila al min butunihim la min uqulihim. There are some people who will be stimulated to the truth via wealth and not through intellectual engagement. My message is the Nabi of Allah dealt with everyone differently. He reached out to everyone on a different level and won their confidence. So he gave. Safwan bin Umayyah said, إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أعطاني ما أعطاني وإنه لا أبغض الناس إلي فما زال يعطيني حتى صار أحب الناس إلي. Allah's Nabi gave me, I despised him. He gave me, I disliked him. He gave me, I resented him. Then he gave me so much, there was no more room to hate him. Can we not build bridges? Can we not build a sense of unity? Can we not find that way how we can win the confidence of every person? Hafiz ibn Qayyim has written again. 
No, no, you've been declared this. You share in platform with a non-Muslim person on stage. So that's the end of your iman. All I'm saying, when you talk, my brother, talk with little bit of knowledge. Talk with little bit of knowledge. وَيَرَى الْإِمَامُ إِبْنُ الْقَيِّمِ إِسْتِدْلَالًا بِهَذِهِ الْحَادِثَةَ أَنَّهُ قَدْ يَتَعَيَّنُ عَلَى الْإِمَامِ أَنْ يَتَأَلَّفَ أَعْدَاءَهُ لِاسْتِجْلَابِهِمْ إِلَيْهِ وَدَفْعِ شَرِّهِمْ عَنِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَيَقُولْ الإمام نائب عن المسلمين يتصرف لمصالحهم وقيام الدين فإن تعين ذلك أي الدفع عن الإسلام والذب عن حوزته لاستجلاب رؤوس أعدائهم إليه ودفع شرهم عن المسلمين ساغ له ذلك بل تعين عليه فإنه وإن كان في الحرمان مفسدة فالمفسدة المتوقعة من فوات تأليف هذا العدو أعظم ومبنى الشريعة على دفع أعلى المفسدتين باحتمال أدناهما وتحصيل أكمل المصلحتين بتفويت أدناهما بل بناء مصالح الدنيا والدين على هذين الأصلين رحمه الله رحمة واسعة uh, This is academic and it's like yo. Oh, I don't know what's the appetite and where you are in the whole lesson Okay, let me simplify here He's saying based on this rule in Hafiz ibn Qayyim I, I was giving a talk now in Turkey to some students Yes, two days ago so the flight got delayed, so they invited me to one madrasa. About 200 students all over from this Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. And I impressed upon those tulab to do hifdul mutun. I can see many students here. Memorize the text. Make hifdul mutun. Why aren't we taking pride in memorizing? We've just lost that pleasure and that excitement. For me, many ibarats are like irresistible. This is like, you can't go without this. Read the Ibarat and see what's conveyed in it. وَيَرَى الْإِمَامُ إِبْنُ الْقَيِّمِ إِسْتِدْلَالًا بِهَذِهِ الْحَادِثَةِ Hafiz ibn Qayyim writes, because of this incident, that at times, citing an example, it would be necessary for the leader of the Muslims to appease the non-Muslims. Okay, so I don't know. You can accuse this one, that one, this organization, that. Hafiz ibn Qayyim says, based on this, the Prophet of Allah is not giving the wealth to the companions, he's giving it to new Muslims, recently accepted. And Hafiz ibn Qayyim is saying, the vision, the eye, the thinking, the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ is to appease them, to ward off the potential harm on the Muslims. Then he goes on, I'm simplifying. فَإِنَّهُ وَإِنْ كَانَ فِي الْحِرْمَانِ مَفْسَدَةٌ Surely by withholding that funds from the Muslims, there's going to be turbulence, like it happened in Hunayn. The Sahaba said, Oh Nabi of Allah, you didn't give us. You're giving the wealth elsewhere and you're not giving here. Why are you doing this to give the non- لِيَأْمَنَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ شَرَّهُمْ to keep the Muslims safe against the evil. We need to be real. We're not living in a country of, of Muslims where the state is not a Muslim state. Hafiz ibn Qayyim says, read who Hafiz ibn Qayyim was. He says, based on this, that the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ was trying to suppress the evil element and win their confidence to ward off their threat from the Muslims. And then he writes, surely by not giving that wealth to the Muslims, it came with its own set of challenges because it left the noble companions momentarily disillusioned. However, when you compare the two harms, the harm that was left by not giving the believers is less in consequences than the expected harm of not appeasing the enemies. 
ومبنى الشريعة على دفع أعلى المفسدتين باحتمال أدناهما and the basis of the شريعة is avert the greater tragedy even if you have to contend with the lighter one وتحصيل أكمل المصلحتين بتفويت أدناهما and try and rescue and secure and procure the greater one even if you lose بل بناء مصالح الدنيا دين والدنيا على هذين الأسلين it's the basis of, 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 of all things anyway I'm saying open your arms up bring a discipline in you don't judge any person, someone coming to you, allow him. Sometimes a non-Muslim comes to our masjid. What is our approach? Do we immediately, what's he, what, what? وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ استجارك فأجره حتى يسمع كلام الله ثم أبلغه مأمنا ذلك بأنهم قوم لا يعلمون He doesn't know, he wants to know. You must see what Allah Ma'alusi Baghdadi writes here. ويلتحق به كونه طالبا لسماع القرآن وكونه طالبا لسماع الجواب وكونه طالبا للجواب عن الشبهات والدليل على ذلك أن الله علل وجوب تلك الإجارة بكونه غير عالم Okay, last quick reflection So we all read Surah Yasin and may Allah grant us the ability to continue the famous man Habib Najjar who came وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ اتَّبِعُوا مَنْ لَا يَسْأَلُكُمْ أَجْرَى وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ He came running to the people and he seen the prophets or messengers, the different opinions that are given there. One narration is in Taqiyya. We had landed now in Ghazi and Tup. I was looking at the map. Ghazi and Tup and Tok or in Takiya is very close there geographically. So that's one opinion given there. Many have uh, argued a different opinion. Long story short, this man who was a believer came in his town who was on a distant place and told his people. Now the people were disbelievers. They were disbelievers. And uh, they didn't respect this prophet. And then Allah sent two and three. فَعَزَّزْنَا فَقَوَّيْنَا بِثَالِثِ Two, three to reinforce them. So when he reproached his nation, again, look at the beauty of the Quran, when he reproached them, so there is a wrong that's happening and we need to reproach it. And I always say, we all have double standards, so be gentle when reproaching others. There's inconsistency in my life. There's inconsistency in my life. That's the reality. What I'm talking, look in my life, my children, my wife will know better and they will tell me, I don't live up to the mark. But which one of us matches what we say? So we all have this disparity so when we reproach, let's be gentle, let's be loving, let's be accommodating. Because I have inconsistency, you have disparity. So this man, when he reproached, when, when he wanted to guide his nation, he said, Wama li? Wama li? He didn't say, Ma lakum? Hey, what's wrong with you? You're not doing the right thing. He said, what's wrong with me? Why shouldn't I worship Allah? In Ruh uh, al-Ma'ani, it is written, فيه التلطف بإرشاد قومه فيه التلطف بإرشاد قومه وإمحاض النصح لهم حيث اختار لهم ما يختار لنفسه وهذا من دأب المصلحين He didn't say what's wrong with you people He said what's wrong with me Why shouldn't I do the right thing And that is the approach you adopt to win the confidence of people The last thought here quickly Someone said it so beautifully, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ أَخْفَىٰ الْقَبُولِ لِتَبْقَ الْقُلُوبُ عَلَىٰ وَجَلٍ Allah has concealed whose actions are accepted. So every one of us remains in a state of panic till we die. I don't know where I stand, my brother. You don't know where you stand. So, إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَخْفَىٰ الْقُبُولِ لِتَبْقَ الْقُلُوبُ عَلَىٰ وَجَلٍ We have to remain in this year. You completed the exams, but you don't know the result. Number two, وَأَبْقَى بَابَ التَّوْبَةِ مَفْتُوحًا لِيَكُونَ النَّاسُ عَلَىٰ أَمَلٍ And Allah has left the door of tawbah open, so there is hope for everyone. My brother, you in a club, you in a pub, I've said this before also, perform the janazah, yeah, at our nuclear cemetery one day. And then I spoke about the Prophet ﷺ said, if 40 people come in your funeral and they make sincere dua, Allah will forgive you. So brother came there, studded, tattoos, long hair. He said, hey brother, 
sorry man, did you say the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if 40 guys come and they pray and Allah will forgive? I said, yes. So if I speak to 40 of my friends and I ask them to rock up at my funeral, will Allah forgive me? I said, yes. He found one hadith. He's got hope in it. Give him the hope. I always say, 50 people take a business class seat. You nudge the person on your right, what you paid? It cost me an arm and a leg, man. You? No, my brother works for the industry. So all I had to do was pay taxes, and that's it. You? I'm patriotic to the airline, so I got bumped up from economy. How about you? I had miles, so I redeemed it. 50 people in business class. Everybody got a different story to the seat that he occupies. The millions that will be in Jannah and the billions, may Allah make us from amongst them. Every Jannati will have a different story which will attract Allah's mercy. Hey, how you got into Jannah? Nothing, man. Every day before I go to work, I kiss my mother's feet, I kiss my mother's forehead. Whenever anybody phone me, my dad's call come up, I say, sorry, end the call, it's my father calling. And I'm not saying this in a casual way. I say it, I mean it. My beloved dad is here, my children are here. I've been advocating this message. Your dad, your mom calls, and your other calls. Nafal salah fuqaha say, end it and respond. Your container can wait. How oh, Allah gave you just nothing. When my mom called, everything stopped. Everything stopped. That's my mother calling. Now I want to acknowledge Dr. Shiraz here as well, Alam Dean, because my mom means my life, and he's done so much for me, for my mom. He's answered my call 20 times a day, and he's answered my call wherever I've been in the world, and I'm eternally indebted to him for this year. May Allah reward him for that. What got you into Jannah? Nothing. I just seen a bird. So many times you're driving and you see this dog sniffing around. Allah is my witness. I try and go in my trunk. I wish I had some meat. Just drop it down. And that is something your Allah loved and Allah. Every man has a different story. Inna Allah akhfa al qubul. Allah's concealed it. Every man in that business class got a different story. Every jannati will have a different story that will attract Allah's mercy. وَكُونُوا كَوَحْرَةَ فِي بِرِّهَا تَنَالُوا الْكَرَامَةَ بَعْدَ الْمَمَاتِ وَقَدْ أُمَّهَا بِشَوَاهَ الرَّمِيذِ وَقَدْ أَلْهَبَ الْقَيْذُ نَارَ الْفَلَاتِ لِتَذْفَرَ It's a whole poem about wahra. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about how Allah gave her Jannah because how she served her mother. So Allah kept the door of Tawbah open so there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. My brother, take one action. Whatever Allah has given you on talent, take it. Allah will forgive. In the end, we all are... We know where we stand. We just, it's just what's going to attract Allah's mercy. That's it. Otherwise, who got it right? It was the Sahaba and the Anbiya. Other than us, we just scribbling. Everybody is coming, going to, huh? going to, to, to the school, kindergarten. The grandchild, the great-grandparents are coming and everything. It's the graduation of the triple knot. Graduation of a triple knot child. What was it? Oh, you scribbled so nice. Wallah, I'm scribbling. And Wallah, you're scribbling. Today, my son's telling me, Abu, my granddaughter needed uh, to go to see a little doctor, or whatever. I held her. My wife is my wife, and I cried because I was giving out candy to these children in the camps. And they were jumping on my head to take the candy. And I'm seeing how cold it is. And I know this candy is not conducive because they're going to get sick. But there's nothing to eat, so the only thing they're going to eat is this year. So I'm sitting there and I nudge the brother. I said, when they get sick, what happens? When they get sick, what happens? How we mollycoddle and how we pamper our child. Take them to a chiropractor. Take them to this doctor. Take them to this physician. Check this out. Straighten the back. Do this, do that. What don't we do? And kids are walking out like this year. Other than I can call myself a munafik, what else can I say? So we're scribbling. Those who wrote are gone. A person asked one of my beloved ustads, he said that, I heard that the sleep of ulama is ibadat. He said, those who sleep with ibadat, they're gone. For us, for now, it's only so much that when I'm sleeping, it, it, at least I'm not sinning. That's the only thing. To call it ibadat is too far. When I'm sleeping, at least for that time, I'm not in sin. وَأَبْقَى بَابَ التَّوْبَةِ 
ليكون الناس على أمل and then وجعل العبرة بالخواتيم لألا يغتر أحد and Allah has made the judgment on your last action so nobody becomes arrogant in his life Allah said I will decide al-ibratu bil khawah how did you die what was your last words my student here Mawlana Abdullah Mufti Masood Sab son may Allah bless him every day he phones me every day I'm so envious of the work he's doing every day Ustad I'm going to visit now in this week two boys in our community who left Islam in this week Ustad advised me what must I tell them Ustad how must I deal with this here left Islam this issue that issue وَجَعَلَ الْعِبْرَةَ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ لِأَلَّا يَغْتَرَّ أَحَدِ Allah has made the final result on how we die so nobody can lift his head high because I don't know where my death will find me and you don't know where your death will find you. I will prefer making a mistake on the side of precaution and calling a non-Muslim a Muslim. But Allah save me from making a mistake by calling a Muslim a non-Muslim. I will prefer that. There will be no consequences for that in Akhirah. If you assumed a non-Muslim to be a Muslim and you dealt with him based on the apparent and the outward, but day you throw someone out of the fold of Islam, how is your death going to come? Where will my death come? إِنَّ الْمِعْيَارِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتَّقْوَى وَلَيْسَ الْأَقْوَى إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The basis in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taqwa and not strength. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to follow the entire life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember he said, I eat also, I sleep also. I fast also, I'm with my wives also. And sometimes I sleep alone also. And then he said, فَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي The one who turns away from my balance. My opening message, become strict on yourself. Become disciplined on yourself. Engage in lengthy prayer. The Nabi of Allah would engage in so many wasal. He would recite so much Quran. He cried before Allah so much. Inspire your, sir, your, your students. Inspire your disciples. And inspire the ummah with your character. And bring that discipline on yourself. کہتے ہیں کچھ لوگ میرے رگ میں نبی نبی لیکن پڑھتے ہیں نماز ہفتے میں کبھی کبھی کہتے ہیں کچھ لوگ the biggest casualty of COVID has been Salah my heart is crying my heart is crying there are so many people in our community who are five time musallis are performing Juma in their houses till today the man is in every other place some things are blaringly inconsistent Every alternate view is not some suspicion or some indoctrination. People who are pegs in the masjid, pegs, two years the man hasn't seen the masjid. I cannot imagine that restlessness or supposed restlessness. کہتے ہیں کچھ لوگ میرے رگ میں نبی نبی لیکن پڑھتے ہیں نماز ہفتے میں کبھی کبھی نبی کا نام سنتے ہی جھوم جاتے ہیں نبی کا حکم سنتے ہی گھوم جاتے ہیں الحمدللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین سیدنا و مولانا محمد و علی علی و اصحابی اجمعین ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وما يلا the eyes of that child whom I couldn't clothe and I couldn't give a candy to Allah is looking me in my eyes Allah Allah the sight of that child walking bare feet in minus five Allah while my children has a closet exclusive of shoes is haunting me Allah 
Allah, that sister sleeping on the floor. Allah is giving me restless nights and nightmares. Allah, change the direction of this ummah. Allah, we live in a life of luxury, so others are deprived of necessity. Allah, give us the ability to prioritize Allah. Allah, give us the ability to uphold the sunnah of our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah, make us miftahan lil khair, mighlaqan lil sharr. A key to virtue and a lock to evil, Allah. Allah, reward all those that have come here in their numbers, in their scores and multitudes. And all those that have put this event together, Allah, grant goodness and barakah to each one, O oh Allah. Allah, you grant us ease, Allah. Allah, you grant unity to this ummah. Allah, let us be a means of, of, of bring, saying kind words to others. Save us from Allah, salakukum bi al sinatin hidadin. Save us from salakukum bi al sinatin hidadin. We with our tongues, we chop up people, O oh Allah. We do character assassination, Allah. Allah grant us humility. Allah preserve our seniors, our beloved parents, Allah. Allah make me a good student to my parents. Allah make me a good child to my parents, Allah. Allah make us good partners to our spouses. Allah make us good parents to our children. Allah grant us the life, the love, the muhabba of our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah grant us a clean heart, Allah. Allah grant us a clean heart. Allah before we used to enter the graveyard, then we used to reflect for 24 hours. Then from 24 hours, Allah, it became 4 hours. Allah, from 4 hours, it became 2 hours. Allah, from 2 hours, it became 20 minutes. Allah, now we stand by the cover and we don't reflect of mouth, Allah. Allah, we stand at the cover, we lower in Him, and at that time, we're talking of dunya. Allah, grant us the understanding. ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَيَّكَ الْحَجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَى وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ وَإِنَّ مِنَا لَمَا يَهْبِتُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Allah let water also roll from our eyes, soften our hearts, Allah. Allah, those of us that are not in speaking terms with our relatives, Allah let us patch up, Allah. Save us from being the means of severing ties, Allah. Grant us muhabba and understanding, O oh Allah. Allah let us resolve all our dealings, Allah. Let us be debt free. Let us be pride free. Let us be jealousy free, O oh Allah. Make us an asset to Ummah, Allah. Let us leave behind a legacy, Allah. And if we can't leave a legacy, let us delete the trail of evil. We ask from you all the good that our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked from you. And we ask thy divine protection against all the evils from which our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked protection. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.